What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Today we got a bit of a weird one, uh, not gonna lie, and I don't have high hopes for it, but we're gonna we're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna have fun today. That's what we're doing. We're having fun. This isn't a Zoria stack, it is a Protean Enchantment stack. Uh, did pull this from Aether Hub. This is not my original list, but uh, did play test a little bit and it does kind of work. Uh, it's it's fun. Uh, so obviously it's based around a lot of little enchantments. So we've got like all that glitters, Sentinel's Mark, uh, Starlet Mantle here, uh, and then of course things to like Mirror Maid to hopefully kind of boost those things up. Uh, as well as Banishing Light, and then most importantly, of course, Staggering Insights. So that way we can not only gain some life, but draw some cards as well. Uh, and then, essentially, it's built around this card. So Protean Thaumaturge, whatever, this card. Uh, what's great about it is every time you play an enchantment, you get to make this a copy of whatever the strongest creature on the battlefield is, which makes it very advantageous for you to then always be attacking in. So say they play, you know, you play this out, <clears throat> and then... They play like a scavenging ooze or something like that. Uh, well, all you've got to do is then copy the scavenging ooze, and now you have the strongest creature on the board because it also has an enchantment uh, tacked onto it. Uh, and so it sort of just inherently becomes the strongest thing on the field almost no matter what, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, this whole deck has a bit of a mill sub theme. So uh, Towering Wave, Towering Wave Mystic excuse me, uh, anytime it deals damage, target player mills that many cards, which is really, really nice. Obviously, we can get that pretty strong with things like all that glitters, uh, any of these little enchantments, and then, of course, copy it if we want with the Protean, uh, this card. Um, and then, uh, of course, we do have things like Teferi's Tutelage. So every time we draw a card, we get to mill two cards on their end. Um, obviously, with things like Staggering Insight, that's really, really good. Not to mention just drawing our card every single turn anyway. Um, this also kind of keeps us... The Staggering Insight also kind of keeps us moving forward. Uh, I have playtested this a little bit. And the issue that I tend to run into is that we kind of run out of things to throw out there as far as creatures. Uh, we can pile up on enchantments all day long, but if we don't have a creature for it, it doesn't really help us. Uh, and so there is an issue with that, I think, uh, in some cases. Uh, now, to help kind of alleviate that, we do have the Lazatop plating here. Now, not only is this a great way to protect our permanents, so if they do target something to destroy it, uh, we obviously instant speed throw this out there, and then all of a sudden we also get a little 1-1 one -one with it. Uh, what's great about that is, in a worst-case scenario, we can just play this out and get a little 1-1 one -one, uh, at the end step of my, of, of my opponent's turn, and then be able to pile on a bunch of enchantments to that little 1-1 one -one, uh, on my turn, and then hopefully move forward. So... This gives us a little bit of flexibility, which is really nice. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's nice. Uh, the big kind of finishers here are Archon of Sun's Grace. So this is really a card that can go over the top in these enchantment decks. We've played with it a number of times before, and it's fantastic. Uh, if you get this out and just stick like two or three enchantments, generally you can kind of win the game pretty quickly. This is also just a great target because it has lifelink and flying kind of built in. So you have a way to kind of guarantee uh, some evasion um, uh, to get some damage in. So very, very good. Uh, like I said, Mirror Maid here is a really cool card because uh, it does either, you know, double up on an all that glitters, give us an extra banishing light, give us an extra tutelage. It gives us a lot of flexibility. This is essentially four extra copies of any uh, enchantment that's that's right for us at the time. So this is really perfect. We do, of course, have four Banishing Light. This is our removal package. This is it. Uh, so it can get a little difficult. But again, with the Mirror Maid, that really, really helps. So uh, pretty solid deck. It's a little challenging uh, is the best way we'll put it. Uh, but it is really, really exciting. Uh, as far as the lands go, we do have 20, uh, which, again, in its own right, can be a little bit challenging. But we do max out at four. Uh, so four Plains, four Islands, four Hollow Fountain, four Temple of Enlightenment, and four Fabled Passage. So... That's the deck. That's it. Uh, we do have some sideboard cards here. I don't know why. Uh, again, I pulled this list, so that's kind of interesting. But let's jump in. Let's see how we do. I don't know. This one is a bit weird. We're gonna. We're our goal today is to have fun and see if it works. If it does, that's great. If it doesn't, you know what? We got to hang out together and play a little magic. And what what could be better than that? Excuse me. As I pull my water, as I I am. A messy boy and did not leave it on my cup holder uh, or my coaster over here. All right, let's see what we're up against. Um, also, let me just say, in playtesting this morning, uh, just in general, 
Wow, this is an interesting hand. We're going to try it. We've got the back up here, which I like. Obviously, we're going to lean on this, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, kind of wish we had a staggering insight here, but that's okay. And we're against Luris. Uh, yeah, so in like, in the, oh, well, there we go. In playtesting this morning, I just want to mention how frustrating it was uh, because <laughs> I, I did playtest another deck. Uh, it was actually Sultai Ramp, but that list was not really where I wanted it to be. So I figured we'll hold off on that. And then I kind of pulled this one just because I thought this would be a fun one. Um, but... Oh, nice. That's really cool. Oh, look at this. I like this deck. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, we um, <laughs> we play tested a lot. Like I play tested like six or seven games just in general this morning uh, before actually jumping into the recording. And uh, I think twice they t the opponent just immediately gave up. We never even got past like accepting our hand. They just gave up immediately. One game, uh, we got through turn one, and they just gave up um, for no reason. It's not like we did anything on turn one. They literally just, we got to the board state, and then they gave up. Um, and then uh, another game, we got, like, turn five, turn six area, and they just disconnected. I don't know if that was on purpose or if that was, you know, by accident, but either way, that was very frustrating. Uh, and so that's where I'm at. Uh, I really did not enjoy that. Uh, let's see. This is a frustrating card. No doubt. Um, let's do this, though. Uh, this, they're gonna be able to sacrifice some things here, but we're gonna make them take a hit and draw a card off of it, um, because I think that that's the best thing we can do. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll take this in case it dies this turn. Also gets it out of Disfigure range, I suppose. Although if they've got Disfigure, they should use it now, I, I assume. Um, okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine with me. If they want to block with the Priest here, they can. That's great. Get rid of that stupid thing. I hate this card. This card is so annoying to play against. Um, this just gives us, I think, a way to push through a little bit of damage, uh, draw a card, gain a little bit of life back here. Now, if they just play any creature, uh, they can use the priest and make a sack it, which is not good, but we do have backup, so I'm not terribly worried about that. And because we drew a card off of this, essentially we just got to replace it. Um, and, you know, we're going to lose the staggering insight, that's not great, but we'll see what can, what we, what we end up doing here. I think we'll be okay, but this is definitely going to be difficult when this comes back. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. They got their 5-5. Five five. This That's a very sweet interaction. Um, very much enjoy that. That was cool. Uh, if they play another creature, they can still use the priest. I doubt they will use it with the 5-5. Five five. Um, that's just my guess, but... Seems like that wouldn't be an ideal play. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, we get to leave up the Lazatet plating here um, if we would like. We're just going to copy this. And this is what I'm saying. We get to copy the strongest thing on the field, which is really sweet. Um, all right. Now we have a giant 8-8. Eight eight. Um... And I do think what we'll do is just attack in here. We'll see what they want to do. We're obviously going to gain 8 out of this regardless, which is great. Okay. Boom. And we get to draw a card, of course, which is awesome. Um, and now I'm kind of in the camp of we just leave up the Lazatet plating, hopefully bait them into sacking some things with the Priest. And then we just sacrifice the 1-1. One -one. Um, I think that that's good. We'll see. Uh, if they do have a targeting, like something to target us, then we just use this as well. Um, so I think that this is a great place to be, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, this is a, a very interesting deck on my end. I've, I've not played with this deck before. It's a little different, um, but it's very, very cool. Uh, we are going to take a hit here. That's fine. <clears throat> Let's see what they do. 
opponent really thinking here. A little surprised they didn't buff the knight. I guess they didn't really need to, but just to get a little extra damage in. I don't know what else they've got going on, though. So, so this is exactly what we're talking about. We get to do this in response. Now these have hexproof, and I can just sacrifice the 1-1. One, one. Um, did that not... Oh, we just... That doesn't work. Huh. Well, I mean, we just got a free 1-1 one, one out of it, I guess. That was interesting. Uh, let's do this. We'll do this, and then decline, obviously. Um... Hmm. Yeah, let's do Fairy's Tutelage here as well. Uh, we'll do this and then decline again. Another Staggering Insight. All right, hey, we got there. Sweet. That worked out great. Um, all right, that's exactly what we were trying to do. That really worked out. I'm a little surprised. Um, but you can tell exactly what I mean by when we get that Protean out there, we just get to copy the biggest thing on the field, and then all of a sudden we will always have the strongest creature. Uh, which is really nice. <laughs> because we have so many enchantments, it makes it really easy to do that. So let's open up our pack here and we'll jump into game two. Uh, cool. That's fine with me. Um, man, I love this. Uh, really quick, if you are not entered to win our Double Masters giveaway, we do have a giveaway going on. We released a video about it yesterday. Uh, we've also posted about it on all of our social media stuff. If you are interested, all you've got to do is subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment on any video with hashtag double masters and that's it you're entered to win uh, what you will be winning or what one person will be winning is a uh, free double masters draft pack um, if you're international that's fine you can certainly still uh, enter we can't ship that to you um, and so the way that we'll, we'll do that or the way that we generally handle that is if we pick somebody international um, wow what an interesting hand dude let's try it we've got all four let's do it um, if we pick someone that is international, uh, again, totally fine. We'll just send you a PayPal payment, uh, and and it'll be of equal value to whatever we would have spent on the draft pack. So that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Hopefully, um, that is uh, reasonable enough for all of you. The winner will be chosen on August 10th. That is the Monday after Double Masters is actually released. We also have, we'll have a giveaway like a few days later coming out, um, and I could not be more excited about that one. Uh, this is a really cool time and it resolves history uh, as we're doing a lot of really interesting things that uh, I hope are going to be fun for everybody. Also just want to encourage, I've harped enough on it, but I just want to encourage everyone to check out the JDC if you would like to be a part of that. Um, if you've got a YouTube channel, you certainly can be. Uh, also I'm leaning on this because generally this kind of deck isn't going to have too many creatures. Um, and I don't know if they'd want to spend a removal spell on the Mystic here. We'll, we'll see, but... Um, anyway, if, uh, like I said, if you would like to be a part of that, uh, please check out our website. You can submit an application there. Um, and that's all you got to do. It's just a silly little thing. So that way we can have a little bit of fun, but also make sure that we've got everybody's contact in one place. Pretty easy. Um, and we'll supply everything for you. Uh, for anybody wondering, we are planning on making like team names, like sports team kind of names. Um, and so part of that includes, uh, obviously making individual logos and things like that. We wanted to make that, uh, as easy as possible for everybody. So what we've done is we've kind of taken on the responsibility of getting those made for you, uh, just to make it easy. We want to have every, just enjoy a good time with everybody and have a, have a, hopefully a really fun, just silly league. Uh, and so we do need a few more participants if anybody's interested. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to attack in here first. We'll see what ends up happening. Okay. That is fair. Uh, in that case, we just play this out. Um, unfortunately, that is just going to be a very difficult struggle for us against this deck. Uh, Esper Control, really, really good at dealing with any of any strength of creature if that makes sense they just have things that straight just kill creatures um and so that's gonna make it a bit of a challenge um to fairy is also a bit of a struggle for us because not only does it shut down the plating 
Um, but it also makes it very, very easy for them to just bounce one of our souped up creatures. So we need to be very careful about over committing. Um, that's very good against us, though we don't actually have a staggering insight right now, so it's not really the worst thing in the world. We'll see what they pull. Um, interesting, interesting. I think this is just going to be a very difficult matchup, uh, and I think that you should expect that against a control deck anyway. But uh, Narset's just such a good card. Oh, I love Narset. I love the stained glass art as well. It's just beautiful. Um, also, I... Oh, no. We have a network here. That's not good. Um, let's do this. Uh, also, just want to um, open up the door really quick here. Uh, is there anything... Um, I, I try and ask random questions from time to time. Is there anything that you would like to see in our online store that is not already there? So... Uh, we've played with the idea of making our own custom tokens. We've played with the idea of doing more land series, series um, all of which I'd love to do, uh, but generally is just kind of a time constraint kind of thing. We just don't generally have all that much time to do it. Guys, we may have to uh, exit out of the game here. Mm. Yeah, I think we're going to have to exit out. All right. If, uh, if I do have to... Um, restart i apologize let's uh let's bring this back up ah i hate this uh anyway okay while we're bringing this back up let's just see uh so like i said we do have uh our online store where we're selling our space lands we also added some like little canvas print things that i've been kind of creating just for fun um those are made to order so it's not like we have back stock of those uh we we order through a third party and so that's kind of where that's coming from but if you're interested, um, those are there. They're a little pricey, I understand. Um, and so if you if you don't want those or you can't afford those, I, I get it. Um, okay, I don't know what's happening, but I'm getting a lot of noise. Wow, we're still in it. Okay. Um, I'm going to concede because we've clearly drawn some stuff and like that was, that was rough. Uh, they got a glass casket and a banishing light as well, so I don't think there's much of a... A way that we could have won anyway we'll not count that game most likely we'll we'll try and jump in we'll see how long it takes here but uh network errors are very frustrating uh but yeah if you're interested like uh, custom tokens for instance is that something you're interested in um we can't sell our proxies directly so we're not doing that uh anything that we custom create we can sell but obviously we're trying to be very very um respectful of the fact that other people's art is other people's art um, it's not something that we feel comfortable, you know, giving out to people or selling out to people. So that's not something we plan on doing. I did get an ad the other day, uh, given that we, we don't have any creatures. So I think we have to mulligan here. We still don't have any creatures. Uh, let's try it. I don't love this, but we do still have the tutelage. We had it in, in the first hand as well, but generally this is just a bad setup. Um, Anyway, so uh, I did get a little ad the other day um, for a a proxy website, um, and they were selling their proxies and stuff. And certain things are viable to do that with, and certain things are not. It's just a very touchy subject, and I don't want to be stepping on anybody's toes when I do it. And so that's why we don't. Um, I, I find that that's very disrespectful to the artist, but um, that's just kind of my view. Uh, it's great because we're very fortunate because the way that we try and handle it is it's just really a added bonus to supporting us is the way that we kind of look at it um, through our Patreon. And so that's kind of the easy way to, to say, like, if you want them, that's a great way to get them. But we're trying not to just, like, hoard out tons of proxies and make tons of money off of stuff that's not us, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's not very fair. All right. This is a weird deck. It's just a dog deck. I'm into it. I like it. Boros dogs, let's go. Um, what do we want? I honestly have no idea. A creature would be nice. Banishing Light is not. Um, we just pass, I think. We're not doing well. This is a bad hand. Unfortunately, this happens with this deck, and this is what I'm talking about, where, like, 
It's a little inconsistent. Um, the number of enchantments versus the number of creatures can ve can can put you in a bad position. Um, we do have the Lazatop plating, so we will fire that off at the end of the turn, um, just so we can get something out here. Uh, but it's not great. I mean, realistically, it's not the strongest thing in the world. Um, yep. And really, it doesn't do a ton for us, you know? Yep. Because we still have to face down all of this next turn. Uh, which is not good, as it turns out. Alright. That is the worst possible land we could have gotten. That's not true. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> it's 100% true. Um... Ugh. Like, we just lose, right? I don't think there's a way we can get out of this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and concede. Let's jump into our last game here, I think. Um, we'll not, like I said, we'll not count that second one just because there was that network error that kind of threw us off, but that's fine. Um, all right, let's do it. Last game for this video. Of course, we'll do a video too, so we will have three games in that one as well. If you would like to check that out, that should be out just a few minutes after this one. Um, will hopefully be at least we'll see <laughs> uh let's see do we keep we do have a creature yeah we'll try it <clears throat> isn't the most amazing hand in the world but we do have a nice early game drop here uh with the tutelage as kind of a backup here uh if if nothing works out staggering insight we'll keep um probably should keep creatures more than anything here but we just kind of need something to, to throw down on this, so. Let's do it. Hopefully they don't kill it. It's kind of a silly card, but. Huh. A boot nipper. What a nice little thing. <laughs> it's a boot nipper. Oh, that's cute. Um, okay. Well... What do we do here exactly? Maybe we just leave up the uh, Starlight Mantle. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we could do this. Eh, we'll try it. Mill them for three, we gain three. That's fine. We got another boot nibber and a Knight of the Ebon Legion. Um, so we're not in great shape here, though. The reality is... Okay. Um, you know what? Sure, we're going to count it because we're already at 23 minutes. That was weird. This was a weird video. This is what I'm talking about, guys. It's been a weird day today. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess we won. <laughs> <laughs> whatever all right we're gonna jump into a second video with three more games um i do enjoy this deck i think it's funny uh and i think it's kind of silly but uh it does need i think a little more consistency is its problem but other than that we'll we'll summarize all of our thoughts obviously at the end of everything so we can kind of talk about it more then but it's a fun deck it's a silly one it's not very expensive to make so if you want to make it have some fun uh, and I will see you very, very soon for video two of this deck. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you then.